All right, everyone, welcome back to another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video. Fat Film. We're going to talk about the worst farms in Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. Whether it's the overall experience, how long it takes, just feeling like you're never done, which ones are the worst? What are the least enjoyable farms in this game? Let me know your thoughts. Which ones did I miss in the comment section? Let's give a huge shout out to our channel members here for all of their continued support. If you're ever interested in joining, that link is in the description, along with the link to the Discord, where these guys get to take advantage of, you know, a bit more unique access to me and any you know questions advice they need i am there for them so thank you guys for continuing to put your faith in me we're gonna flip over to the game here but of course let's get our introduction out of the way and talk about this list all right so here we go let's get into our list and we're gonna start off strong with probably one everybody thinks is on here dr afro so from a performance perspective honestly i think she gets a bit too much hate um, she doesn't require Omicrons to do well. Now, she's definitely not on the level of Starkiller and some of these other teams because she, I think, unfortunately was designed with this with her Datacron in mind, and her Datacron makes her a galactic legend on offense. Defensively, she struggles, and without her Omicron, or without her Datacron, really does can struggle. But I think for if you look at her with the lens that there's no Omicrons required. Her team is pretty easy to get between, like, farming BT1 and Trip0, who are requirements, and then, like, HK, B2, IG88. Like, you, it's very easy to get her team. So, like, I think from a performance perspective, it's about what you could expect. Like, you're not doing something crazy and not getting anything returned, but, you know, you get a good character with her Datacron. Otherwise, you've got a, you know, you get a great character with her Datacron. Otherwise, you know, just good. Uh, but honestly, with Afra, I kind of view her like a side quest. Like, she's literally that side quest. You know, you're doing... It's like going through and playing the uh, Thieves Guild missions in Skyrim, right? Like, it's just completely off to the side. It has no implications to the overall story of the game. Think of, you know, like Borderlands going in and doing some of those little bounty missions. Like, you get some extra rewards, but it doesn't help you in the overall storyline, right? That's exactly what this team is. Just doesn't really help you get anywhere else. It gives you a good, you know, shiny toy at the end of the at the end of everything. But I think it's just a side quest. And that's kind of why I say it's one of those wor like one of the worst farms because you you make progress towards Afra, but not to anything else. Whereas even Star Killer still has some wrecks that you know has you know Dash Rendar that overlaps. Um, this one just kind of feels a little bit more empty to me. Again, just one man's opinion. It's why I've never done her. All right. Grand Inquisitor is next, and this one just never feels done. You never feel like you're done with the Inquisitors. It, like, even, like, you think, when you're building these guys, you get them to Relic 5, and you go unlock Grand Inquisitor. And then you're like, okay, I've got Grand Inquisitor, like, I've got these guys, I'm ready to go. Oh, well, I need them at Relic 7 to start earning Reva Shards. And then you've got to go build Reva. And so, it, like, you just never feel like you're done modding, gearing, inquisitors and then on top of that they have that special mission in rise of the empire that requires them to be at relic eight and i get that a lot of you're like oh well i'm not worried about that yet but it's always looming over your head like every single time i'm looking at relic gates i kind of always come back to this faction i'm like you know phil you could probably do some relic gates on your inquisitors and it would you know be able to you know used in that mission it is just you never feel done i never feel like i'm satisfied with this faction i always want to get them to hire relics always want to put more on them and I think even, like, you also think about, like, somebody like Second Sister, who I left at, you know, Relic 5, because, you know, she's the one that you don't really use in the mission. But she's the pilot, which is, like, awful, because I want her at High Relics, because she's the pilot of that ship. So, again, I just never feel like I've ever been done with this faction, even when I've had them. And, and along the way, too, like, let's be clear. These guys are absolute dog water before you get Grand Inquisitor. And then you get Grand Inquisitor, and they're a solid team. You know, they can beat General Skywalker on offense. A lot of players will overkill them defensively, which I've covered extensively. Like, they get overkilled a lot. But then you get Reva, and you're like, wow, this team's awesome. You know, they finally get to that level. But it's the journey along the way that just is brutal. And then I never I never have felt done with this faction. I'm never like, yes, done. Finally, I can move on. I'm always kind of coming back and looking at getting better mods looking at getting you know more relic levels it just it doesn't feel done and so it's just like this empty feel like it's always been this empty feeling right i don't know maybe i'm just you know pondering too much but that's kind of the way i feel next is general skywalker and this one's gonna surprise people but the farm for general skywalker is like an iceberg 
when you look at the requirements for General Skywalker, right, on the surface, you're like, okay, it's, you know, I got this. Like, you need this, these guys for the first, uh, I think this is phase two on the, you know, in the ground, right? So, Padme, C-3PO, Shakti, General Kenobi, Ahsoka Tano. None of these are bad characters. And the first four in this list are all Galactic Legend requirements. And then Snips here is a core member to the Padme team and to the Jedi Master Kenobi team. So all very good requirements right here. Like you're not wasting any gear. And then you get to the phase four team and I, I, I skipped the fleet for now. We'll get there. But then you have this like these characters here and it just it pisses me off so much because I get canonically it makes sense like general grievous and anakin do not fight in the clone wars so that their interaction at the beginning of the revenge of the sith makes sense but god it sucks so much that you have to build asajj for p4 who is useless with the droids right there's no synergy with her and these guys so it's just like this useless lead and then these characters so you're like all right I, you know you kind of built like a good team but you're you know you're not going to run this really so then you look and you're like, okay, well, I need to go build General Grievous for my droids. And I kind of need Jedi Knight Anakin up here because I'm not going to use C-3PO with Padme. So right away, there's two more characters that you kind of have to add to this list. Now, I'd be, I'd be lying, you know, remiss, whatever you want to say, if I didn't at least mention that, yes, you do need Anakin ship for uh, phase one. But it's only 40,000 galactic power that you need. And to put in perspective of how little that is, like my Gear 12 Plo Koon has a 47,000 power ship. Like it's not hard at all to get this ship to 40,000 galactic power. So that's kind of why I still included Anakin is there are some players who will probably, I would assume Anakin's one of the more common relics in this game, but it still is like, ah, you know, you don't need him quite that high. And so you get the Padme team, you're like, ah, oh, I guess I should match him. So there's like two more relics or, you know, a lot of gear that you're going to invest right away. But then you need General Skywalker and you only get him at Relic 5. You only get, or 5, Relic 5, you only get him at 5 star. And then you have to go buy his shards with either Mark II raid currency or get one or, you know, crystals to get him to 7 star. So you don't even get a 7 star character at the end of this. You get a 5 star character that you think you have to spend absurd amounts of currency to rank up. And then you're still not done because you got to build the whole 501st. So it always just baffles me when players talk about how great of a farm this is. Like you get some very good teams. Do not get me wrong. You get like really three solid teams out of this between General Skywalker, General Grievous, and Padme. But when you do the math and you think about this, I've listed so far here, 5, 10, 11, 12, 17, right? 5, 10, 15, 17 characters. Most Galactic, Le all the Galactic Legends have less characters that you need to level up than that now do you need all these at the same relic levels as a galactic legend no absolutely not but the concept here is that you're gonna want to relic a lot of these guys you're going to want a lot of them at relics because they're just solid characters so general skywalker ends up almost being this galactic legend level farm between all the relic levels you're gonna do the zetas it's it's crazy and I don't know that it gets enough credit for how, like, uh, intense of a farm this actually is. And, like, you can say, oh, well, there's not that many Kyratek. But, like, Shock T, Padme, uh, General Skywalker himself, and I think even Arc Trooper all take some Kyratek there. So, all of a sudden, you are looking at some heavier Kyratek characters along the way. Um, not saying it's as crazy as some of the newer stuff, but it's still, there's still some Kyratek intensity here. So... I definitely think that this farm kind of gets overlooked in terms of how expensive, how intense, and how much gear and Zetas are required. Um, especially when you think about it, that you need this guy for our next one, which is Lord Vader. This is the most expensive farm in the game. Still to this day, nothing surpasses Lord Vader in terms of, I still think he has the most Kyrotech, but I know for certain he's the most Relic levels. He is the most expensive farm. And he needs General Skywalker. Right? So that's kind of like this whole other thing is that like when you look at Lord Vader and you go to the journey guide, you look at like what his requirements are. Like one of them, it's okay. Hey, you need Padme. Okay, fine. I need Padme for the General Skywalker farm. But then outside of that, you're looking at just needing him. So you've got to do all the rest of those characters that you built for the General Skywalker farm, then get General Skywalker and Padme to relegate, and then do all these other characters here. So... 
just it's so it, it's so funny to me like you got the Kyrotech batch in here too you got some 501st like this mixed bag but you like this is like the Lord Vader farm it's so it's no wonder nobody wants this Galactic Legend and why he's hated so much he's the most expensive even from a relic level perspective and then you add on top of that that you need General Skywalker and it's just like yeah no I, I get it I get why people don't want to do this it's crazy and General Skywalker is definitely not what he used to be. He's still a very solid character, still one of the best teams in this game, but not one of those things where without him, you can't succeed for a while. Eventually you will, but it's not what he used to be where he was this staple, staple, staple. Now I think he's kind of, you know, come back down to earth a little bit. And then on top of all this with Lord Vader, I'm not even done ranting about this yet, right? So Lord Vader, not only is he the most expensive, you need your General Skywalker stuff, but then none of his requirements are in his team when you look at the most common team in 5v5 it's down here none of these are lord vader requirements so you go build lord vader you've now got four more characters you need to get the relics zetas mods it's crazy right like and this is just the most common one i pulled from swigo.gg there's other you know teams you can make out of this but just think about that none of the characters for his farms ever go in his team that is insane. So not only are you doing all these other expensive relics, you got to do these, you know, an, a whole other team for him too. Lastly is Jabba. And I know all of you are like, Phil, you recommend building Jabba. I absolutely do. Remember, this isn't a performance list. This is just like, man, this farm sucked. I hated it. And the Jabba farm to me was right there because of the pain train wrecks. Jabba has some of the most painful wrecks in this game because you're leveling up so many terrible characters. Here's the first five. C-3PO is a solid character. He's a staple for the Commander Luke Skywalker team. But he doesn't need more than Relic Zero, right? Like, he doesn't really benefit from Relics. He just, you know, Relic Seven, he say, oh, he used the Rise of the Empire. Okay, fine. But it, he doesn't need Relics. I'd much rather those be on somebody else. Then you get Jawa, which Jawas are great in their own right, but not many players are gearing their Jawas up to Relic levels. Like, I've got my Relic 3 Jawa and none of the rest of them. You got who, again, Tuscans, a great faction, but in a vacuum, most people are not relicking their Tuscans because they get Jawa, right? Like, this dude's just going to sit in your account. And then you get Greedo and Aura Singh, who, like, fine, Aura, you know, she has a use once in a while. But why Relic 6? And the Jabba Rex are like the Kersantan, Leia, Lando, are Relic 5. Like it, it, it made me so mad that you put Relic 6 on these guys and then Relic 5 on the characters you actually use with Jabba. It, it hurt my soul when that happens. So there's a lot of pain here. But we're not even at like two of the most painful, which is Gamorrean Guard and Mob Enforcer. Like these two characters just, oh my god, it, it hurt my soul to Relic them. And when you think about this, when you stop and look at the Jabba Rex and you look at this, there's seven characters right there that are I, I would put into painful relic territory. Seven characters where it's painful to relic them for Jabba. That's basically half of his requirements. Like half of Jabba's requirements are pain train relics. On top of that, he also does require Jedi Knight Luke Skywalker, which just makes this farm feel so much longer because you got to go get Jedi Knight Luke, relic seven him, which means all those characters and Again, I'm not complaining that Jabba needs Jedi Knight Luke. I think Jedi Knight Luke is a staple build for a lot of teams. He helps you progress along the way. He's actually, I'll make another inverse of this, and spoiler alert if you're still watching, Jedi Knight Luke, probably the best farm in this game in terms of what you're going to get in return. Just an amazing, amazing farm. But you look, there's 16 requirements for Jabba. One of them is being level 85, and one of them is getting a ship, the Outrider. Where is it at? I know it's in here. Um... Outrider to 7 star. So of the 14 characters that you need at Relics, 7 of them, in my opinion, are on the pain train side of things. So half a job is Rex. It's just a painful experience to Relic them because they're not that good. Let me know your thoughts down below. Do you agree with this list? If you're still watching right now, go ahead in the comments. Wampa is king. I love you all. May the force be with you. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers, guys.